Welcome back to Animal of the Week, and once again I'm trying to stay away from deep sea animals because they're just too easy to make clickbait from. So today we're looking at a marine animal from a very shallow body of water. These tiny little trilobite looking things are nicknamed Dinosaur Shrimp. I will admit to a little bit of clickbait here because this genus of crustaceans are only nicknamed Dinosaur Shrimp and you won't find them referred to as Dinosaur Shrimp in the scientific community. They are actually called Triops a genus of 10 separate species that look very similar but are distinguished between by where they live and small structural differences. Many of you might be quite familiar with triops as they are sometimes sold as kits for children to hatch and grow. I personally had never heard of them before this because at my school we did the same sort of thing but with brine shrimp instead. Brine shrimp and triops are actually related though, both being members of the class Branchiopoda. Members of the genus are found all over the world. Triops australiensis is found unsurprisingly in Australia. Canceriformis is found in parts of Europe. Its range in the UK is literally a single wetland in Scotland and a pond in the New Forest. Triops granarius is found in Italy, China, Japan and South Africa. Longi cordatus has the largest range, being found in both the Americas, some Pacific Islands and Japan. Nuberii is found in just the west coast of the United States. There are other species but I think you get the picture, they are found on all continents except Antarctica. The thing with the triops is because they are sold commercially as eggs and can be grown, you can find them anywhere on the planet, and areas listed above are just places they have been found in the wild, and a lot of the time the places they are found in the wild are not their natural habitats. For example, many of the species in Japan are deliberately introduced into rice paddies as they are great at eating weeds among the crop. They require fresh water to live in and like shallow wetlands and ponds, and a lot of the time are found in temporary ponds, only hatching when it rains. As previously said, in Japan many are used in rice paddies because they eat weeds, but with these crustaceans are not just herbivores. Some are known to eat the larvae of mosquitoes and so are great protectors against West Nile virus. They are known to eat a wide range of things, from algae to tadpoles, and will even eat each other. Basically anything that fits in their mouths they will eat, as they do not generally prey on things larger than themselves. So if you are a very small triops, you better keep away from your siblings. As previously briefly mentioned, these crustaceans spend a lot of their lives in temporary ponds, as they hatch when there is a presence of water. Their eggs are incredibly durable as they enter diapause when the weather is dry. Diapause is a period of delayed development where the egg will lie dormant until the correct wet conditions arrive. It can stay like this for decades. In this state, the eggs can survive up to 16 hours at a temperature of around 96 degrees Celsius. Obviously in the world that's not going to happen, but it shows the extremes that they can survive. Different species reproduce in different ways, but most do it sexually. But some species, like Longicordatus, usually have populations that are either overwhelmingly male or female. It is thought this may occur due to how temperature can affect the sex of offspring when they hatch. When this occurs, the main method of reproduction is parthenogenesis, when unfertilized eggs develop into viable offspring by themselves. In other populations and species there are hermaphrodites that will fertilize each other and in desperate times fertilize themselves to reproduce. Essentially these tiny creatures are ridiculously adaptable to any situation and will go to any length to be able to reproduce. This is probably down to the speed at which they need to reproduce as they only live around 60 to 90 days so need to lay the eggs ready for the next wet period quickly. Amazingly, the members of this genus have three eyes. Not three true eyes, they only have two proper dorsal compound eyes, but then also possess a norpilla ocellus, known as a simple eye on the top of their heads. This eye is far simpler than the compound eyes and does not contain a retina, but it is used to detect light and movement, which is very useful when swimming under the shallow water to detect what is above them. That is why it's positioned on the top of the carapace and not looking forward. Where to start? There is so much that threatens these tiny little creatures. Firstly, anything from frogs to birds to fish will eat them in their natural habitats, and as previously mentioned, even their own siblings and other members of the species will eat them. Outside of directly being hunted, many of these species are at great risk in their wild habitats. The destruction of marshlands and bogs has drastically reduced their habitats, and global warming related droughts in places like Australia has resulted in many temporary but regularly filled ponds drying up forever. Other than this, a threat they face in captivity is the negligence of small children, who may hatch them and forget about them. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.